So obviously, Boogie2988, he's been doing some crazy stuff over the last couple of years, being talking about like mental health issues, suicide, his divorce, his weight loss. Obviously, he's always talked about that, but like recently in the last two years, he's been losing a lot of subs on his YouTube channel. So he's talking about that and his mental health primarily, like those two things and how they affect each other. Um, and a couple weeks ago, or about a week ago, um, a troll who's been stalking him since, for like the last three months, basically showed up to his house and agitated him to the point where he felt like he had to pull out a gun uh, for self-defense. Um, and this caused uh, people to talk about it. It was trending on Twitter. A lot of people were talking about it, one of which being... Uh, Matt Jarbo, formerly known as Monday Matt on Boulder Talk Radio, who happened to be friends with Boogie formerly after the stream, they were no longer friends. And he was basically bringing up the idea of, like, what if, like, a portion of this is fake? Like, what if Keemstar or, um, Frank Castle or maybe even Boogie himself, uh, you know, staged this to a certain degree in order to help each other's channels because there's not much drama going on. Obviously, this helps Frank Castle a lot. I guess it helps Keem a little bit, although he did end up uploading it to Storyfire, so again, it wouldn't really make sense for him to stage this for his own benefit since he doesn't really get too much benefit out of posting this story on Storyfire, not YouTube, as well as the fact that Boogie reached out to Keem, so obviously they had no involvement. That has been debunked, but at the time, Matt was questioning these things, and I think he was in his full right to do so. So Boogie came onto his podcast and basically got very upset at him, and um, it all led up to Boogie saying some very interesting stuff that I'd like to talk with you guys about. So, uh, we're going to watch it right here. Ready to kill myself to try to change this platform. Oh, wait. Let okay? me go back a little. You, okay. you there? I'm here. I'm listening. A year ago, I was ready to kill myself to try to change this platform because of this type of harassment. That showed up at my front door today because reddit didn't give a fuck because keemstar didn't give a fuck because no one gave a fuck about etica no one this is fundamentally wrong people did care a lot about etica's passing um obviously it didn't happen too long ago so i'm sure a lot of you guys were on the internet and looking at that stuff to know firsthand uh what happened there and <laughs> Keem definitely cared uh, the most, uh, more than most people, I would say, because of his personal connection with Etika. But uh, let's continue this. I mean, people talked about it, but nothing changed. You okay, people talked about it, but nothing changed. I would say that, like, people's reaction to mental health stuff definitely changed, like, slightly because of Etika. You can't do, like, a fundamental change where everybody on the internet is just going to have this massive like, society-wide change about how something, someone thinks about something. Like, you literally can't do that. If that was possible, racism would be over, right? That, racism would be over if that was the case. But I definitely think it made, like, a, an impact for sure. And I definitely seen people treat, um, YouTubers who are struggling through mental illness a lot differently, a lot more sympathetically. Uh, we saw this with Alinity, in particular, my Twitter vs. Lindy Part 5 video. You saw a lot of sympathy for her uh, because she was describing uh, her mental issues and turmoil with the cat throwing incident. So, and I don't, and if if the Etika thing didn't happen, I don't know if people would be as sympathetic to Lindy as they were in that scenario. YouTube didn't change. Uh, Keemstar didn't change. 4chan didn't change. Reddit didn't change. Nothing changed commentary community just ate it up and profited off of Etika's fucking death and I was ready to fucking go profit off of it I think that's more you, I think you can't claim that for the entire commentary community that's definitely on a person to person basis um but yeah I mean people made videos talking about it because obviously it was like a big deal and people you know had stuff to say about it. Uh, I don't think anyone milked the topic. Uh, I think usually if anyone made a video, it was like one video uh, giving their condolences and stuff like that. 
Uh, I know that I didn't make a video once it happened, so, but I made my video b before. I was ready to put a bullet in my head. Actually, I was going to take pills, but I was ready to fucking end my life in the hopes that it would make a fucking difference. Because as bad as it was that Attica died, he wasn't as big of a creator. All right. Number one, that attempt to... Oh, my God. I don't think... I mean, as I said before, uh, I don't think... One event like that can, like, fundamentally change everybody's minds on the internet and change everyone's behavior on the internet. Definitely can make an impact. I'm not saying Boogie's death wouldn't make an impact. But, like, to say that it would make a more significant impact than Etika... Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. I would, I, I, I predict that it would probably be a tragedy on like the same level. Uh, obviously, people would have different opinions. Every situation is different. But either way, both things are a tragedy. A YouTuber or anybody committing suicide is a big tragedy. Um, but for him to say that he'd have a bigger impact, I mean, yes, Boogie has more subs now than. Etika did when he passed, but it's not like Etika flew under the radar, you know? It's not like it happened and nobody noticed or nobody cared. It was definitely talked about. Uh, so, I don't know. I just disagree with that. I had more subscribers, I had more views, and I've been on the platform longer. And so I thought I could signal boost Etika. And these are the thoughts I had. And I went to VidCon and I talked to signal boost so here's the thing like i don't think number one you can signal boost etika without killing yourself 100 percent, you can signal boost and share the message that mental illness is serious and suicide is serious and stuff without killing yourself you don't need to be that drastic um it like i feel like everybody who already would change their behavior from um, a big content creator committing suicide uh, has done so already, you know? I think most people who would have done that have already done so. So to add on to the pile, I think it just... I don't think it would help at all, honestly. I think it would help maybe a little bit. Maybe some people who didn't know about the Etika situation heard about the Boogie situation changed their opinion. But uh, overall, I don't... You know, I don't know. Let's continue watching this. Everyone about it. Everyone that would listen. I talked to Ian. I talked to SoCal Jesus Christ, McJuggernuggets, kid behind the camera. Is there a way for me to signal boost this? Is there a way for me to achieve this but not have to die? Can you help me figure out how to do this and not have to die? And nobody had an answer. Nobody had an answer for me, Matt. Uh, and I think the reason nobody had an answer, maybe he's being hyperbolic and maybe he's saying nobody had good answers. Because I say the answer to that would be to, you know, just talk about suicide openly on your platform and talk about, you know, how bullying can affect people. Not as like, here's the issue with like how Boogie goes about it is he does do that, but he does it as like a self-martyr and you can see him doing it here too where he does it as I am an example and you can look at me as an example of why not to do this but I think it, it'd be better if he was just more straight up and instead of like oh thank you so much for the 200 bits first time catching a stream love the vids on YouTube thank you I stream a lot on Twitch so uh so yeah uh I hope you guys enjoy for those of you who are watching for the first time, I'm sure a lot of you are, because I haven't really promoted my Twitch too heavily on my YouTube yet. But regardless, thank you so much for the bits, by the way. Call me Taycat. But um, what I was saying is that... Uh, fuck, I lost my train of thought. Do you guys remember what my last sentence was before the bits? Um, it was something about... Boogie being like a self-martyr or something. But yeah, I think it would be much better if Boogie just like... Instead of trying to like 
bait people into feeling a certain way based off how he victimizes himself. Uh, which I'm not saying he's not a victim. I'm just saying that's what he does. Uh, victimizing doesn't mean you're necessarily falsely victimizing yourself. Uh, it just means that you're pointing out the victimization you may or may not have. Regardless, um, I think that he can share this message without making himself the martyr. He can be like, look at what happened to Etika. Look at what happened to Wreckful. Look at what's going on over here. Maybe they haven't, you know, committed suicide, but they might. Maybe you should, like, tone it back because of these other scenarios. He can, like, signal boost this message without trying to, like, make himself the martyr, right? And I think it would... Because the issue is not a lot of people know necessarily he's doing this. Like, they think he's victimizing himself for maybe other reasons. So, if you were just direct with people and you just said, Hey, I want to spread the message of mental health. Um, and just did it up front. It would be a lot more easier for people to understand. And I think it would be a lot more effective. And you wouldn't die. And you wouldn't harm yourself in the process, you know? Um, like, for example, you know, branding yourself as a mental health channel, like, I guess the Rewired Soul is a bad example, but there's a lot of, like, good mental health channels on YouTube where they talk about mental health openly, they talk about their struggles, they talk about other people's struggles, they talk about, um, you know, just psychology and, uh, mental health in general, and they brand themselves as a mental health channel, but they're not, you know doing all the stuff that Boogie does. They're just like, hey, I'm a mental health channel today. We're going to be talking about anxiety. I might not personally have anxiety myself, but I know other people who do. This is my experience with it, etc., etc., etc. You know? If he just more blatantly branded himself as a mental health channel, because right now Boogie's more m branded as a gaming channel, a gaming and vlog channel. Uh, and all he's always had those aspects of like talking about his life and his mental health and stuff but uh, he doesn't like strictly brand himself as that you know like l let me check boogie's channel like if there was more videos like just talking about like different topics like instead of trying to be gaming like going out of his way to like talk about mental health occasionally or whatever like uh let's see like um uh, He's just talking about gaming, 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 responding to Rich. See, this is like beef with himself, drama. Um, this is more drama about him. This is more stuff about him. Like, it's fine to talk about yourself, but like here, this is um, this is a good video. Him talking about like his weight loss journey. I felt like the boogie videos that always resonated with me the most is like when he talks about his personal journey, but it's not like through drama like the reddit or like my beef with the rich or whatever it's more of just like hey here's where i was before here's where i am now and let's look to the future or this is how i personally dealt with something that has already been dealt with or maybe he can talk about like um maybe he could make a video that is like a uh my experience with um you know depression and then he talks about his depression and then maybe some of his friends depression or whatever and he just makes he goes out of his way to make videos that are talking about uh, a certain mental illness or a certain thing just to, like, spread more awareness about it, you know? Brand himself more as, like, a mental health channel rather than the My Life Plus Gaming channel. Um, because it makes it more, like... The way, the way he has it now, it makes it more like we're the therapist and he's, like, venting to us. But I think it would be better if he taught us he just shared his experiences, but not as in like, oh, this is what's going on with me now, and I don't know how to fix it. But like, this is what I dealt with, and this is how I fixed it. So it's more productive for the viewer. So the viewer watching can take something out of it and better themselves that way. And it's like, you're not, the viewer isn't really worrying about Boogie that much because he's already dealt with that stuff, you know? Like, oh, I, I dealt with, um,. I don't know, uh, comfort eating in the past. And now I don't comfort eat anymore because I had the bypass surgery and I've been doing really well on my diet. And this is how I got over it, right? 
And then people will be like, oh, I'm having this issue too. Maybe this is how I can get over it. And then maybe Boogie's a little honest. He's like, sometimes I go back to the comfort food. Sometimes I, you know, slip up, but we're all human. And then people can relate to that as well. So there's like something useful that the audience can take out of it other than worrying about Boogie, you know? Uh, Because I feel it. Yeah. But anyways, let's continue listening to this. They all said, you just have to accept that this is how it is. You just have to ignore it. And the more I talked about it without dying, the more people believed I was lying. And that's why I think, find it so fucking hurtful. Wait, wait, wait. Let me go back a bit. I was kind of distracted by chat, and I want to read some of your chat messages. Uh, I'm sorry for ignoring it for a bit. I just kind of want to go on that tangent. I figured out my issue from watching streams with Twitch. I had issues a few days ago. Oh, yeah, okay, that's just about Twitch, yeah. Uh, I'm glad uh, you solved it, man. Uh, unfortunately, Boogie lets his mental health stigmas control his whole life and his choices and decisions for him. As someone who suffers from numerous stigmas themselves, the best advice I can give uh, is he should be trying to control the problems instead of letting the problems control him. He lives with mental health issues. Uh... When you should be trying... He's living for mental health issue when you should be trying to live with it. Uh, I agree. Uh, you should just be be yourself and not let your mental issues, like, weigh you down. You should be aware of them so you can be, like, self-aware and self-improve. But, like, underneath all those mental issues, there is you. Like, there's a version of you that exists without these mental issues. And if you can learn to um, deal with them... Either deal with them or embrace them, because sometimes there's, like, upsides and downsides to mental issues. Like, in particular, autism, there's a lot of pros and cons to it. Um, but some, there's mostly cons or all cons. But either way, it, whether you choose to embrace it or deal with it or whatever, there's still you under it. Like, I think a good example of this is, like, Ricky Berwick, like, he's really, he obviously has, like, these muscle muscle and physical issues that suck uh, to be born with, but he has embraced it a lot, and obviously, you know, <laughs> if you asked him, do you wish you could walk, obviously, he probably would say yes, but at the same time, he's not, like, letting it weigh him down, and he's also embracing it and utilizing it in, in some ways to, like, make entertaining content and really showing his personality, uh... In con like, uh, when I watch Boogie, I'm not just thinking, like, oh, he's funny because he's cripple. I think he's uh, funny because of his unique sense of humor and then how he utilizes it with his disadvantage to be an advantage, right? Um, so I think Ricky Berwick's a really good example of how you can take something that's just inherently a disadvantage and um, embrace it in a way where it's not as bad, you know? Uh all right let's keep reading uh i don't know if he realizes that he can slash does tend to use a lot of emotional manipulation and pull cards i feel like it's part of his identity yeah, I think he does use some sort of emotional manipulation, whether it's intentional or unintentional, I don't know, but it's definitely there, whether it's unintentional or not. Um, I think it's unintentional, though. But sometimes it definitely comes out, and I think he needs to work on that. Uh, Alright, let's keep watching this. And the more I talked about it, without dying... The more people believed I was. Let's rewind a little bit to get more context because I paused for a while there. An answer. Nobody had. I talked to Ian. I talked to SoCal Jesus Christ. McJuggernuggets, kid behind the camera. Is there a way for me to signal boost this? Is there a way for me to achieve this but not have to die? Can you help me figure out how to do this and not have to die? And nobody had an answer. Nobody had an answer for me, Matt. They all said, you just have to accept that this is how it is. You just have to ignore it. And the more I talked about it without dying, the more people believed I was lying. And that's why I think, find it so fucking hurtful that you thought I was lying today. Because I thought with this happening, with the cops involved, with the fucking footage, there's no way people would think I was lying. 
And it's so fucking hurtful. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I made the decision to live. And almost every day since I made that decision, I've woke up with fucking regret. Holy shit. That's not good. That's not good at all. Damn. Lots of people at Boogie's H refuse to learn and improve because they think they've learned everything. Yeah, I think it's like a psychological thing when you turn uh, like 40 or something like that or get around that age. I've noticed that in a lot of people, almost everyone that age. Um, not just Boogie, of course. But I wouldn't know firsthand because I'm only 23, so. And I've always been like someone who wanted to self-improve, so maybe for me it will be a little different. Or maybe at 40 I will think I know everything. I don't know. I've watched more fans turn against me. I've watched more people begin to believe I was a pedophile. More people to begin, I believe I abused Max. Boogie is in his 40s. I don't know exactly how old. I think late 40s. More people began to believe I was a womanizer. More people to begin to believe that I was some sort of secret monster that lied about his health issues, that lied about his mental health issues, that lied about his molestation, that lied about his child abuse day in and day out. And then today, this sociopath. Here's the thing about that for Boogie. He says he regrets staying alive because people keep villainizing him. But if he passed away, maybe it would take longer, but people would still end up villainizing him in certain ways. Because, um, and we have an example of this. There's a YouTuber who died in 2014 from suicide called Ju Wario. And then it came out, uh, like, I think like three or five years later, that there's rumors, I don't know if they're true, I haven't really looked into it, but there's rumors and allegations that he uh, raped somebody. And he can't defend himself. And now people don't look at him fondly, even though he's dead, you know? Um, so the same thing could have happened to Boogie. Uh, so, uh... I don't think that should be a regret, but that that should be a reason for regretting to not kill yourself. But this sick motherfucker <laughs> showed up at my front door. And I literally had the thought, this is why I'm still alive to fucking put this message out there about mental health issues to put this message out. Does he know the reason? People think he's a pedo. He literally argued that Mr. Beast should fund an adult version of TikTok, TikTok and argued against me and my friend when we said that will groom them into sex work industry and tried to say I was a pedo. Oh. Yeah, I wasn't uh, aware of that. Uh, I'm not sure the validity of that, but yeah, I'm not. I've never looked into that. I never knew about that. I think there's other things in regards to that as well, but, um, yeah, I think Boogie definitely likes being the victim, whether it's subconscious or not. I think he's, like, comfortable in that role, and I think when he's not the victim, he tries to either consciously or subconsciously get back in a position of being a victim. Now, I can look at the tweets later, um, right now I want to focus on this, but thank you for telling me about that milk carton. And thank you all for following. I appreciate it. Out there about bullying, to put this message out there about how the world is changing, to protect creators like you, to protect creators like me, to see if we could change the fucking world. And I, as, as hard as today was, as scary as today was, I thought to myself, this is my fucking purpose. This is why I'm still fucking here. See, that's an issue. But, and, and this is not just like, I think this is an issue a lot of people fall into, not just Boogie, and it's definitely, I think, an issue I fell into myself occasionally, is when you, like, tunnel vision on, like, what's your purpose in life, and, and you just, like, tunnel vision on, like, not specifically that, but just, like, one thing, and try to, like, dedicate yourself to this, like, one thing, like, uh, I don't know, um, uh, l let's do something simple, like, uh, uh, I need to graduate college, right? And you dedicate yourself, and that's your life meaning. My goal in life is to graduate college, right? 
and then you focus on nothing else. You ignore friends, you ignore, uh, you know, building anything else, anything recreational or something that you want to do or build up to in your life later, like, uh, you know, maybe seeking relationships, having a family or whatever. You're just tunnel vision on this one thing, which is graduating and getting your degree. And then you do it. And obviously next you try to find a job, but then you realize that you have a lot of free time and you're like, I've, I haven't built up anything else in my life. I don't have any friends. I don't have, uh, anything else really and now uh, I feel stuck and obviously you know realistically if you're you know focusing on graduation you'll get friends along the way maybe meet someone you love or whatever but I'm just using it as an example uh, and, and it could apply to anything like maybe you getting like a certain league in a video game like oh I'm gonna get diamond in League of Legends or I'm gonna go pro in League of Legends or I'm gonna try become a YouTuber or I'm gonna like focus on my music career or uh what have you, anything, uh, if you just focus on that and you don't put your eggs into other baskets and focus on the other aspects of your life, like, uh, you know, moving out, uh, finding a relationship, uh, et cetera, et cetera, um, it just becomes destructive mentally. And I think that's what, I think Boogie is trying to find, I think Boogie tunneled everything into his YouTube channel. Now, there's obviously speculation or something else. And now that his YouTube channel is falling apart, he's trying to find, like, another thing to grasp onto, like, a meaning to live. Uh, like, oh, this is why I'm alive, is to give people this message about Frank Castle or what have you. And it's not healthy. Your reason for living is a bunch of different things. It's not just one thing. The meaning of life is never just one thing. It's multiple different things throughout your life. So, uh, yeah, that's just an issue. That Boogie needs to work through, in my opinion. This is what I can do with the rest of my life. This is how I make a fucking difference. This is how I don't have to feel guilty about the money I made. This is how I don't have to feel... See, why does he feel guilty about the money he made? That's bad. You shouldn't feel guilty about that. You shouldn't feel guilty of something you tried to accomplish. Even if, you're, in your opinion, you feel like you didn't work hard enough for it or something. Uh, you should still be grateful for your accomplishments and proud of yourself in some sense of the word or else you don't have any self-worth and that's not a healthy thing either. You can't have too much self-worth, then you become egotistical and narcissistic and that can be an issue too, but uh, life and like mental uh, well-being is all about like a balance of all these elements, not having too high or too low of anything um, and maintaining that. And obviously it's not being maintained with Boogie. Guilty about the thank you so much for the hundred bits, crazy Zach. Choice to stay alive. This is how I don't have to feel guilty for all the fans who've been hurt by my choice to stay alive. So, yeah, Boogie actually said that. Okay, and then that's about it for the clip. Uh, I get hugely anxious around the idea of discussing his suicide. Yeah, it is scary. Yo, thank you. I'm glad you're a fan. Okay, I don't know how long this video's been up. Well, I started streaming right when this video came out, so... Fuck, a lot of people are just probably finishing it, and I already said my entire piece. Uh... So over the past... Maybe I should have waited, I don't know. Let's look at the comments. Yeah, Mundane Matt doesn't have a good uh a good track record, so a lot of people are calling him out calling him out here. Hell yeah. Internet archiving. Etika passing didn't make anything change. In fact, it got worse. The fact that someone came to his door shows how bad harassment is getting. Mm. 
Hmm. It seems to be a lot of split opinions here. Augie just went live. Wow! Trying to overshadow me? Maybe we can talk to him about this boogie stuff. Unless he's going live about a particular thing. Because I do want to talk with him about this. A little more. Oh my god, the ridge ball it did. That's so funny. I don't actually have the Ridge Walt sponsorship anymore. Actually, I think my link still works, but I'm not going to do any more ads for them. They didn't get enough sales, guys. But whatever. It is what it is. Augie's trying to cannibalize my views. I know, right? So how many... Uh, I, I want to do a poll right now. I want to know how many people have seen heard most of my take on stream and how many people just came in from the video so i'm gonna do a poll right here um question mark wait question did you just arrive or did you hear me talk about boogie Got here. Heard. I posted a transcript of the speech in your Discord. It uses a lot of repetition, a classic manipulation tactic. I recommend looking at the chat in totality. Tactics used rather than going through it piece by piece. I've been following Boogie for a long time. I was cutting up the stream. The original cut of the stream is or the segment talking about boogie or talking with boogie is over an hour long and i cut it down to like 15 minutes because boogie repeated himself a lot he repeated himself a lot and i wanted to show the gravity of how he was explaining certain things but also i didn't want to show so much of the repetition The poll is already up. Okay, let me go in my Discord and see the the transcript of what people wrote down. Because maybe we could get, like, some more out of this. <coughs> uh, through that. I don't know where it is, though. In my Discord. I can't find it. Thank you so much for the sub, Stuplin. Stuplan. I only transcribed the speech bar. Yeah, I can't find your uh, transcription. So yeah, since a lot of people just got here, I'm gonna go through his uh this thing one more time and do like a, a do a rerun. But I have talked a lot about this. If you guys wanna see my full like um discussion on this, obviously there'll be the Twitch vod afterwards, and then I'm gonna I think re-upload a lot of this to my second channel called Bo Black Spade on YouTube. But uh, I will go through this again and try to like repeat some of the stuff I said because I do think it's like an important discussion. Uh, and I may have just got a little too eager to talk about it and talked about it too early before you guys finish the video. Um, Crazy Zach sends 10, 100 bits. If you have nothing else to do, after you can talk with Augie, you should play Among Us. I would love to talk with Augie, uh, specifically about the boogie stuff. But for now, let's watch this again. Cause this is like pretty crazy what he said. You want me to say some shit that I, well, that's gonna ruin my career right now? Cause do it privately if you to. have to. I no, I, I want the world. That, no, then but don't this is this is gonna end me. But this is bigger than me. Okay, but this is me giving up. Okay, don't, so you want an exclusive? Here's no, I don't care about that shit, dude. No, Fine. here you go. You want an exclusive? Here's your exclusive. Okay, you're jealous that oh I gave a, a, a exclusive to Ethan. Well, here's the reality of what just really happened. Okay. You, okay. you there? Yeah, I'm hey, Boblox, your content's great. Love seeing you grow. Sorry, this isn't about the convo. Just wanted to tell you. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, Franco. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoy the content, guys. I'm here. I'm listening. A year ago, I was ready to kill myself to try to change this platform because of this type of harassment that showed up at my front door today. Because Reddit didn't give a fuck. Because Keemstar didn't give a fuck. Because no one gave a fuck about Etika. 
No, I mean, people talked about it, but nothing changed. YouTube didn't change. Uh, Keemstar didn't change. Now, I want to get your opinion on this chat. Um, how many of you guys think that the internet did change for the better, or at least some people changed for the better, and were impacted by uh, Etika or whoever content creator suicide uh, versus didn't? I'm going to do another poll. Well, actually, I don't know if I should do a poll. It's a little, it's a little insensitive to poll this, but YouTube did change. Some people changed. I'd say it's about fifty fifty. I would agree with that. Uh, now, the next question I would, I, I want to ask is like, do you think Boogie? Um, yeah, this is very serious. I don't, I don't want to make light of this by like polling people, but I, I do want to ask like, do you think that like Boogie? you know, committing suicide, which would be horrible, by the way. And I do think it would make some sort of an impact. But do you think it would, like, ultimately change things in the way that Boogie hopes? Because I don't personally agree with that. I feel like if anybody was going to change uh, their behavior due to, like, a YouTuber committing suicide, uh, it would have already happened. And, pe and it has happened, in my opinion. Um, so I feel like... It just wouldn't help. It would just be a tragedy. Let's continue listening to this. 4chan didn't change. Reddit didn't change. Nothing changed. Commentary community just ate it up and profited off of Etika's fucking death. And I was ready to fucking go. I was ready to put a bullet in my head. Actually, I was going to take pills. But I was ready to fucking end my life in the hopes that it would make a fucking difference. Because as bad as it was that Attica died, he wasn't as big of a creator. I had more subscribers, I had more views. Than I think it makes it worse rather than spreading awareness about it. Maybe, yeah. I I was saying this earlier, but I think Boogie, instead of Boogie trying to make like a stance by, you know, uh, oh, thank you so much for the sub, Pooh Love 7. Hell yeah. And we start a hype train, that's cool. Um... I think Boogie can talk about this without trying to be a martyr, right? I think he could talk about this without trying to make it so he's setting himself up as an example of why you shouldn't do this. I think he should just tell people why they shouldn't do this instead of trying to make an example. Because I think people will understand more and it would be more direct. Like, in his mind, he's always, you know, with himself. So he knows what he has said and hasn't said on the internet, and he's paying attention to his career a lot. Most people aren't. Most people are just passerbys. They watch one boogie video every couple weeks for 20 minutes, and that's it, you know? Obviously, there's people who engage a little more, but mo most people don't, you know, go online and look at boogie a lot, especially not the people who support him as much as, like, the haters would, you know? Haters tend to be a little bit more obsessive in that regard. Um, so not everybody knows, probably, that Boogie's trying to send this subtle message of, like, hey, I'm an example of why you shouldn't treat people like shit. Um, so if he just directly told people, then I think it would, you know, for the people who don't pay 100% attention to Boogie, they would know, instead of having to, you know, figure it out through these, like, subtle clues of, like, or maybe not so subtle clues of, like, oh... I'm doing this because of this. So that's why you shouldn't do that either. Um, but I don't know. Like, just ma maybe make videos being like, hey. Like, I, I think um his video about Frank Castle was a step in the right direction. Being like, this is why you shouldn't come to people's houses. Uh, and I, I think him using himself as his example was good in that scenario. But sometimes you can talk about it without making yourself the example. You can... Use someone else as an example, like a friend, an anonymous friend. Like I had this friend named so and so. You make up a fake name. Let's call her Beth or whatever. It's not that's not her actual name, but you just make up a fake name to keep anonymity, uh, and, and then you just talk about a scenario, and there'll be a lesson in there, you know, uh, or or talk about himself, but in the past tense, so people don't worry about Boogie in the moment, like, hey, this is, I, I had this eating disorder, and I used to, you know, eat for comfort, but then I had the bypass surgery, and 
I stopped eating as much and I've gone on a really healthy diet and it's helped me a lot and this is how I went through it and sometimes I go back to the comfort food and this is how I'm dealing with it and maybe you can deal with it uh, like m maybe you can take some of the ways I dealt with it and apply it to yourself so you can help lose weight as well. Uh, I think that would be much more productive than, you know, making a big statement, a final statement and, you know, committing suicide because that would number one that would be awful no one wants that and then number two i don't think like in, in comparison to being alive to be able to you know spread a message um i think that's just so much more stronger anyways and i've been on the platform longer and so i thought i could signal boost etica and these are the thoughts i had and i went to vidcon and i talked to everyone about it everyone that would listen i talked to ian I talk to SoCal Jesus Christ, Big Jugger kid behind a camera. Is there a way for me to signal boost this? Is there a way for me to achieve this but not have to die? Can you help me figure out how to do this and not have to die? And nobody had an answer. And I think the reason nobody had an answer is because it's not because dying is the only way. It's because there probably is no way to change everybody. And make everybody mindful of mental health. Mental health, like the general discussion around it, is something that's been, you know, increasing over the years. And uh, used to, like, never be talked about. And it's getting better, but it's never going to be, like, a snap. It's always going to be a gradual thing. That's why racism still exists in some forms. Because you can't flip a switch or do something and everybody's automatically not racist, right? You can do stuff to make people to stop being racist. But you can't do everybody at once. It's like a gradual societal thing. And that it's the same thing with mental health awareness, right? It's the same thing with all this stuff. So doing one definitive action like, I'm going to kill myself and everybody will realize this is wrong. It's not, or that bullying online is wrong. That's not, that's not realistic, you know? It, it could definitely make an impact on some people. But it, it can't do it on everyone, and even if it makes impact on some people, I would say that the people it would make an impact on, it already has made an impact on through the other YouTubers who tragically passed away due to suicide. So, uh, I, I, adding Boogie to the, to the list of YouTube tragedies, is I don't think it would help. Nobody had an answer for me, Matt. They all said, you just have to accept that this is how it is. You just have to ignore it. And the more I talked about it without dying, the more people believed I was lying. And that's why I think, find it so fucking hurtful that you thought I was lying today. Because I thought with this happening, with the cops involved, with the fucking footage, there's no way people would think I was lying. And it's so fucking hurtful. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I made the decision to live. And almost every day since I made that decision, I've woke up with fucking regret. I've watched more fans turn against me. I've watched more people begin to believe I was a pedophile. More people to begin, I believe I abused my ex-wife. More people begin to believe I was a womanizer. More people to begin to believe that I was some sort of secret monster that lied about his health issues, that lied about his mental health issues, that lied about his molestation, that lied about his child abuse day in and day out. And then today, this sociopath, this sick motherfucker showed up at my front door. And I literally had the thought, this is why I'm still alive. Yeah, you guys are right. This is like emotional manipulation to an extent, like for sure, because he's saying because people don't stop talking shit about him, that he wishes he killed himself. He regrets staying alive because people shit talk him. Which is emotional manipulation to make people feel bad. And maybe they should feel bad. I don't know. I'm not one of those people who relentlessly talk shit about Boogie, right? But this is just too much, man. You can't... Because then if something does happen to you, God forbid, you're going to be like emotionally traumatizing all these people who may not deserve it. Maybe there's someone who actually likes you, 
but then they like saw one comment and they doubted you for like a day or two and they made a couple comments to you being like boogie i lost respect for you but they do genuinely care about you deep down and then you say that the reason you killed yourself is because of people talking shit even though you're probably not referring to the person who just said i lost some respect in you that person is going to think that it's them and they're going to be living the rest of their life feeling guilt for your death. So it's just... <laughs> it's horrible. To fucking put this message out there about mental health issues to put this message out there about bullying, to put this message out there about how the world is changing, to protect creators like you, to protect creators like me, to see if we could change the fucking world. And I, as, as hard as today was, as scary as today was, I thought to myself, this is my fucking purpose. This is why I'm still fucking here. This is what I can do with the rest of my life. This is how I make a fucking difference. This is how I don't have to feel guilty about the money I made. This is how I don't have to feel guilty about the choice to stay alive. This is how I don't have to feel guilty for all the fans who've been hurt by my choice to stay alive. So yeah, Boogie. All right. Thank you so much. For <clears throat> thank you so much for the sub, Gerald the Bear. Uh, I see you guys are leaving a lot of comments. I'm going to scroll up and read as many as I can. Obviously, there's a lot. You guys are saying a lot, and I appreciate it so much because I love hearing your opinions. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to... If I miss any, I apologize. Um, as bad as Monday Matt is, Boogie has been perpetually playing the victim card for a long-ass time, which is why he gets too much negativity. He tries to make everything about him, and it comes across as disingenuous. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh... He thinks he could become a martyr if he killed himself, when in reality, it would just be another suicide statistic. Yeah, it would be, it would be tragic. It would, I don't think it would help overall. At all, in any way. But the fact that he says this so much about how he's going to kill himself or hurt himself, or he's breaking down, it would hit people harder. But him doing it after announcing it so much, I feel like a lot of people would almost expect it and write it off as expected. Maybe. Either way, it would be tragic. I don't know much, but I heard he has done other things that make it hard to take his words seriously. Yeah, he has done. He has lied in the past. The interesting part of Boogie is that he wanted uh, that he wanted to suicide for awareness, but it just promotes suicide. Yeah, that's true. I think like people who are emotionally suicidal, they see this stuff and they see. You know, Etika passing away and other people passing away. And, you know, the people who aren't suicidal, it probably makes an impact on them and they're nicer to people who are struggling with that. But then the people who are suicidal, I feel like uh, it makes them feel like they're more justified in doing it, especially if someone they looked up to uh, committed suicide. Suicide is nothing to talk down on, but I feel like he wasn't going to do it to bring awareness. I know Boogie gets fucked with a lot, but he knows he doesn't, or he wasn't actually going in to do it. When, if he thought, even if he thought it would bring awareness, instead of saying suicide would bring attention to the topic, he would spread the message in a different way, maybe. Uh... It's such a loaded question. What kind of answer was he expecting? I've never heard of Boogie before this. So while I feel sympathy, he doesn't look good here. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I honestly think that his game plan here is the president. Get everyone talking about you and make them eat it up, or at least that's how it feels. As someone who has, who has had suicidal uh, ideation, 
I don't know if I said that right. Thinking to do it for awareness on YouTube is just an excuse to make it seem positive instead of just forgetting. Instead of just being forgotten once you pass. Boogie is so fucking manipulative in this clip. It's always, I'm depressed, I'm mentally ill, I want to die. I thought we were friends. You think I'm a terrible person. Boogie is a certified gaslighter. I think he's a gaslighter to some extent, whether intentional or not. I would like to think it's not intentional. Boogie found someone weaker than himself. He keeps interrupting the host because he can. Too bad talking too much is always what bites Boogie in the foot. He's he is easily influenced. He gets influenced easily around him. He needs to believe in himself more. I hope he does so soon. I agree. Boogie needs a lot more self confidence. Also, typically suicide is a self selfish action. That's why I don't believe he's going. He's not trying to get sympathy. He commits suicide to get away from. I kind of feel bad reading these. I kind of feel bad just, like, talking on a platform about someone's potential suicide. Hey, Bo, I love your content. I just finished a video. All I heard was a lol cow cry about other people being annoyed by childish action to the situation, then add the blue he'd kill himself for a multi-billion dollar corporation. He's delusional. Thoughts of grandeur has infested his desire to die. Pog your stream, bro. I want to say Boogie is... Tr is trying to use this as a way of him being the victim at the same time. It's hard to say. Maybe he should calm down. It's bullshit. He said he took this thing seriously, but he didn't get a restraining order. He didn't call the cops, and that dude showed up. He also takes his mental health very lightly. He keeps on saying he talks to his community, which is not a solution to therapy. His entire thing is... You lie, you garbage, you garbage, pogger. For real, he's talking like he's the main character, like he's the only one who can make a difference in the world is borderline psychotic. Emotional manipulation is exactly what he's doing. If he really asked a bunch of people at some con about suicide, that is a mass that is massive emotional baggage to put on others. I agree. That I don't think that's fair to put on others. Again, like I. I I think it's good to talk about mental health on your YouTube and with other people and stuff, but I wish he would talk about it in a way where he wouldn't make people worry about him. And I think that's definitely possible. It's great that you're bringing awareness to this because I would have never found this. Even if he believed that it would bring change, you should never put the idea that suicide can bring change. Someone would take it completely the wrong way and believe that... I should have said that in the video. I should have reiterated that suicide can never make change and I shouldn't have even... I don't know. It was just hard to process what, what, what was going on in there, which is why I did this stream. But at the end of my video, I should have said that suicide is, is not the answer. I might change my pinned comment to suicide prevention hotline. The community IMO would use Boogie killing myself to make a difference as a joke. Damn. I think Boogie needs some friend, someone like Healthy Gamer GG or a Healthy Gamer Dr. K. I think that would be great if he went on this podcast. I think he's trying to be relatable by using mental health, but it comes off as using suicide as a new personality trait, and it comes off bad. I think Boogie needs to try find another way to approach his mental health. Will you start drama with Bo Black's beta? Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you for the one dollar ten tabs open. So Bail Black's beta is my second channel, by the way. I I'm going to kind of skim by these comments a little more so I can get back to like what the real time chat. Because I, I honestly don't think I can read it all. But thank you all so much to for bringing in your uh, your thoughts. I'm done with people talking about Etika. I care too much. Um. Yeah, I don't like talking about him either. I only brought it up because Boogie brought it up. Um, but yeah, I don't like how people bring him up all the time either. You should be able to talk about the situation without bringing up his name. Just saying like, oh, YouTube, YouTuber suicide or social media suicide is an issue. Because 
Etika isn't the only one who did it too. Like I feel like if we single him out as well, it's like a disservice to the other people who've lost their lives to the tragedy that is suicide. So I wish people would stop bringing it up as well. And I guess I'm not doing anybody any favors by you know bringing it up here, but it was because Boogie talked about it. So I find it interesting that he keeps pursuing and building up drama, but he went on the mental health route. Mental health isn't a joke, and him saying he wanted to commit suicide to change people's views on the internet is disturbing. Not to mention he's guilt-tripping. Yeah. Hello, Boblax. Just stopping by. Thank you. Susie, Susie is here. <laughs> Boogie fucks horses? What the fuck? Yo, thank you so much for the sub, uh, CM Carlito. And thank you all guys for following. I'm seeing the following thing go off a lot. I appreciate that. I stream here a lot. I stream here almost every day. So, uh, yeah. I am not guaranteed a daily streamer, but I stream whenever I want, which happens to just be every day sometimes. There was one, I think I did like a five day or four day gap a while ago, so. It's not always super frequent, but I do stream a lot, so I appreciate the follow, and I hope you guys enjoy future streams as well as this one. Usually I just play games, uh, and I'm probably going to play games after I'm done reading these chats here, because... And I'll still answer chats about Boogie, but, like, uh, maybe just not focus on it as much, because we already talked about it a lot, and it's kind of a dark subject, to be honest. Definitely link Suicide Prevention Hotline. I will after this stream. Think your pin comment would be a good idea, true. I feel like I didn't make that clear enough in the actual video. I think I made it clear here in the stream and not in the actual video. The hotline is unhelpful. Okay, I think I'll just say like see like I think I'll just put a motivational message to discourage suicide. I don't think I'll actually put the hotline. Because you're right, some people do post it and it does seem like kind of disingenuous, like, oh, it's suicide, just post the hall line, you know? And it definitely is more deep than that. And I don't really know how much a hall line helps, honestly. Because I've never used it. All right, I caught up to everybody. I used I'm your code when chat. I bought some rake and earbuds. Hell yeah. Yeah, hopefully I can get another Raycon ad. You've used the hotline, it helps. Maybe I will link it. I don't know. I'll, I'll put some sort of pinned comment after I'm done the stream for sure, though. Boogie just needs a break from YouTube and recuperate himself. Yeah, but he also needs to do some severe, like, you know, self-reflection. Congrats on 4K followers. Hey, we hit 4K followers. I had 3.8K before I started, so hell yeah. 200 followers. Thank you guys so much. I honestly don't know how many viewers we have right now. I don't like to look at the viewers when I stream because I feel like, uh, you know, I get a little too self-conscious. And I just want to have fun here. I'm not trying to, like, uh, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I, I want to hit, like, a certain goal or whatever. 200? Damn, that's a lot. Thank you guys so much. That's awesome. Hopefully I can get uh Twitch partnership soon. But yeah, how many of you guys uh like watching game streams here? Cuz I know some people like watching discussion streams, some people like watching game streams. So I'm kind of like curious uh what your guys' opinions are on that. Cuz I am I'm I'm going to transition to some games soon, but uh 